guys and welcome to Take Your Time Gaming. I'm your host Wesley. Welcome back to Mist Episode 3. In the last episode we read a bunch of books. We spent a lot of time doing boring stuff uh, but we now we have a really good understanding of all the different ages that exist and uh, so the only one left to read about is the mechanical age. The age with the gear on the cover. So we're gonna read that first get that out of the way and then we're gonna go walk around and see if we can't solve some of these puzzles so grab yourself a tasty beverage and let's get started currently we're back in the Parthenon in the library we are going to check out the last book here on the shelf we have not read yet and I will read this first before arriving in this age, I was determined that it would be a journey to a world very different from my previous adventures, and it was. The sky here is dark and gray and incessantly displays flashes of lightning in the distance. I met a very old man with a long beard and hair that hangs to his waist. He is very feeble and has trouble even moving. This man has obviously been through many things in this strange world, and I have learned many things from him. He has told me an interesting story of this world's history. Years ago, he told me, there was a beautiful city that rose up out of the water. It housed many people inside its walls, and the people had everything they wished for. The city was surrounded by three high hills which rose higher than the city. On the east hill of the city rested a large lookout post. The people of the city had constructed the post expecting visitors to arrive from the east. The people had no means of traveling on the water, which forced them to merely wait for friend or foe. As time passed, Friendly visitors brought rumors of an enemy that existed beyond the horizon. The people grew fearful. Yet nothing happened. One day, the usually sunny sky became as dark as night, and black ships appeared on the horizon. The lookout posts' attempts at peace were turned away, and the sentries there were easily overwhelmed. The ships continued to wreak havoc on the city, apparently destroying everyone and everything. After the foundations of the city were destroyed, the city sunk deep into the ocean, and only the lookout post remained. The black ships sailed away. The man continued to say that eight people had hidden and managed to survive through the attack. In the nine years since the attack, two of the survivors had died. He also said that it was rumored that ten years from the attack, the enemy would return to finish the destruction they had started so long ago. I have decided, since hearing the man's story, it would be admirable to save this civilization and stop this enemy's plan of destruction. I am excited about the adventure that awaits me, and an idea has sparked in my mind to provide the needed defense for these people. I met the remaining survivors today, and I have begun work on a plan for protection. Some sort of building here. It's hard to read. After a short absence, I have returned to this age with my two sons. They have, as of yet, traveled rarely with me, and they are understandably excited to be here. They have grown considerably since Everdunes, and it is already obvious to me that they will be a great help this time, instead of the nuisance they have been in the past. Oh, kids. All three of us, along with four of the healthier survivors, began construction today. We are building upon the old city's ruins, which will provide a perfect foundation for our fortress. My sons have been spending much of their spare time on the South Island where most of my materials are stored. I am very pleased with their intelligence and their creativity is refreshing to see as they work on some small projects of their own. An interesting staircase, which appears to be retractable. It has been over four months now and construction is going well. My sons love the world except for its gray sky. They detest the gray sky and tell me many times they wish the sky here were like the blue sky and mist. The old man I first talked to tells me that the enemy is due in four months. I feel we will be ready when the time comes. The man reminds me of Emmett in many ways, and I often wonder how Emmett and his people are doing. It has been six months of work, and we have finally finished the fortress. It rests between the three hills, which are now only islands due to rising water level that the people experienced after the attack. 
Inside the fortress, I have designed a most intriguing device. It makes use of a technology called holography. I began experimenting with on my visits to Aspermere. It will be working in a couple of days after I compensate for some small miscalculations. This holographic device will enable the survivors to learn to use the fortress. The enemy is due to come soon, and I trust the fortress will provide sufficient protection for all of us. So here is uh, the map of the Mechanical Age. There is a track around the island which appears to be powered by a large gear. Uh, so not much in the way of detail, so I'm not going to bother writing this down. The black ships have come. Their attack was substantial. Their weapons have been stopped, and it appears they have been turned away in defeat. I could not help but smile as I watched the boats leave. Last night we had a small celebration, and the old survivors danced their dances of old. My sons did not understand why the sky had not turned black to its original blue. The old man told them that the storms would never end until the enemy was destroyed. I assured my sons that a blue sky was not worth the risk of death, and they seemed to hear me. I have had a healthy adventure and have begun to work on a new book. Once again, I must leave a familiar age in search of a new universe I have begun. But first, I will have an extended time with Catherine, whom I miss very much. I must also return to the people of the tide. I believe in my travels I have found a substance that will ease the pain of their bone ailments that they have long endured. I hope to return to Mechanical Age one day and find the population growing and my fortress still strong. Though the sky may always be black, I am confident the people here feel a heavier darkness has been lifted from their shoulders. Okay, so Mechanical Age is the final age. And that leaves the, the rocket ship age that we called before is likely Everdunes and not rocket ship age. So I'll make some updates in the notebook and we will... Okay, so uh, where do we start? Let's get back in the fireplace, shall we? I think it might be useful to put in some of the numbers we already know are significant. So that would be the ones in the holographic reader. So the number 8, the number 47, the number 40, and the number 67, if you'll recall from the, the wall poster there. First, let's go to the codex. I'm going to pull all three numbers, try them out in the fireplace, and I will let you know how it goes in a bit. Nope. Okay, so I don't think those significant numbers have anything to do with it. Uh, let's try something else. Let's try something else. Uh, we don't have any of the switches turned on on the island. The only place that is on is the library here. <clears throat> let's just see if that makes any difference on that map, because it does have the tower, but nothing else is present. So let's go out here. Let's go flip this one here and see if that changes anything on the map. Aha, so now it's illuminated. So I think we need to go, now that we found all the switches, let's go on a quest real quick and turn them all on. So. That's one. That's two. Number three is on. Number four is on. Five is on. Number six is on. Number seven is on. And we can't get to number eight, which really saddens me. So, clock tower time. Is there a reference anywhere to time that is important? I haven't found one so far. Let's go back to the map 
now that we've turned on all the switches but one. Um, let's see. There's a book and a key. So the book should probably face the library. They're 180 degrees out. So what what do we need to look at? Let's look there. Let's look at this thing. So the key slot, the book is still blank, and the key side, which is the big doorway, is also still blank. Solid rock. Back down we go. We're going to wear this elevator out, guys. I really hope they pay for a good elevator, like a Schindler or something. British guy I know used to make fun of Schindler because they made elevators, which in Britain are lifts. So he used to say, oh, we're getting into Schindler's lifts, which I chuckled at briefly because he was my boss. Oh, that's new. It lights up red. So. Since that line is now red, let us go back to Schindler's Lift, as we're going to now call it, and head upstairs. Oh, no longer is it solid rock. We have a view of the rocket ship out the keyhole. The music has changed as well. So the key, what is the key? 59 volts. So we looked at the rocket ship from the other porthole and this black brass plaque tells us 59 volts. That is likely the actual voltage we need to power the ship. Let's go back downstairs. While we do that, I'm going to make a note in our book here. Let's get out of here. Go cruising on over. We will undeploy our staircase here. And now, we've got to figure out how to make 59 volts out of this generator. So we'll run downstairs. We'll switch over to our notebook here. 59 volts is our target. Okay, so we need to turn on 10 and 8 and 22 and 19. Let's go investigate. I bet you that doorway opens now. First let's check our breaker here. Victory! Huh. This is very Buck Rogers. There's a pipe organ in the back of this rocket ship, which makes absolutely no sense. There's a light here at the top, a dome light that I assume comes on when you open the door, and this weird imager thing. Okay, so you throw the lever, and it plays sequentially these knobs. Okay, enough of that. I don't know what to do here, but if you'll recall, back to our notebook, 
we have to assemble a musical phrase. So let's take a look at our notebook here. One, two, three, four, five. If this place take me out to the ball game, I'm going to be really disappointed. I know, I know. You tuned in. You thought we were going to play Myst, but I'm playing the beautiful pipe organ. So let's uh, stop wasting time here. Note number one is it's a nice beautiful C number one number two is an octave higher oh it might actually be take me out to the ballgame uh, three is So we're pitch matching between the two. The uh, the note that it's saying we should play versus the note we actually play. Four is... Oh, so all we got left is five? Ta-da! That looks like a linking book. Ooh. So, by powering up the spaceship, by putting in the musical code into the dashboard, we have been given access to a linking book to uh, the Everdunes Age, I believe, which is what the spaceship reported. So that was the very interesting... Uh, age with the hot winds and everything else going on. Before we link out of here, which I think is what will probably happen if I click this, uh, let's go ahead and exit and see if we can't get the rest of the puzzles solved, because I think each one of the places, the clock tower, the uh, planetarium, uh, all of those things will give us a different linking book to a different age. So that one we can check off. Okay, I really, really want to find a way to get across that clock tower so we can turn the last switch on, because I don't know what that does on the island, but it's got to be something useful. So there's a time, some kind of time, that we need to set that thing to, and I don't know what time that is. The only thing that had a time on it that I've seen so far is this bad boy, but that doesn't really help, so... What do I need that has a time on it? Nothing. Oh, let's go back to the library. So we're gonna we're gonna set up here. See if we can't. Uh, let's point this. In. Okay. We'll just go through and get these all figured out here. Seems really impractical. I guess they probably hadn't invented Bluetooth at this point, but seems like it'd be way easier than punching in the uh, combo, clicking the wall map every time. All right, so we are now looking at the gears. We're oddly close to the gears, uh, but perspective is difficult. Let's go see what the key to this puzzle is. 240. Two, two, one. Let us write that down. I swear I'm drawing a key here. Down we go. Let's find the rest of our clues before we move on to the next linking book.
Fly down the hallway. We are looking at the ship. So let's go back again into Schindler's Lift. And we are now looking at the mast. What is the key to get this linking book? I believe the ship goes to the stone ship age because that makes the most sense. thinking there might need to be one here at the planetarium, but now that I think about it, probably the date that we got for uh, deploying this one, uh, which relates to the stations here, is probably for what we get from the dentist chair here in the, uh, in the dentist office, so I don't think we need a clue from that one. We'll get the clue from this next one, which is the cabin in the woods, and it's actually pointed at the tree outside the cabin in the woods. So. We're looking for a three-digit safe combination, most likely because the safe there is in the cabin. Up we go. We are looking at the giant, giant tree. Seven, two, four. If I could learn how to click, this wouldn't be a problem. For some reason, all I have stuck in my head is Donna Summer's She Works Hard for the Money, which is not appropriate song to be singing in an elevator that I can think of. Okay, so presumably we need to find the correct time to activate this one because we can't point it at it until we've activated the, the switch that's out there in the ocean. Uh, so we need to find the time to set the clock tower to first, but let's go ahead and go out and activate all the rest of these things. I want to go back to the dentist's office because my teeth are really hurting. I don't have an appointment, I'm just going to come right in and sit down in the chair and then realize that I forgot to turn the lights off. It's okay, you don't need light, right? Okay. To access the Stone Ship Age, October 11th, 1984. And the time of that one is 10.04 a.m. Oh, gee. What do you think that looks like? A leaf? That looks like a leaf to me. Let's write down the leaf on next to this, this one on our paper here. Next, January 17th, 12.07. Time, 5.46 a.m. Hmm, that one is a little bit trickier. Yeah, that one looks like the snake. And our final one, November 23rd, 9791. Pretty much the end of time, 6.57 p.m. Wow, it's flying way into the future here. does not look familiar. November 23rd, 9791, 6.57 p.m. 
Nope, I take that back. That is the spider. So you've got the upper big torso and then the arms here. So we now know which stations are relevant. Let's exit here. Thank you, Mr. Dentist, for giving us uh, some things, some thoughts to chew on. Okay, so we know which stations are which now. We need the we need the leaf, we need the snake, we need the spider. still turned on. So really pretty simplistic puzzles, you just have to find all the clues. And behold, the ship has risen from the water. So I'm just gonna jot down the ship rises. And a yo-ho-ho -ho to celebrate. Let's go check it out. Let's see if it's all up, up and at him here. Aha! The ship has indeed risen from the water. We can now step onto the boat. There appears to be a cabin here. With the linking book. Stones, I see the stones he mentioned with the very deep water, uh, the lighthouse that he talked about building, the ship, and the ramps that we saw on the map. So I'm not going to click on this just yet. We'll go ahead and move on to the next puzzle. So this one is a little puzzling. as to what needs to be done. If we remember, we go back to our clues that we got. The mechanical age was showing 240 and 221. So that's the only time we have reference, but the gears don't do anything. So I'm thinking we go back to the clock tower and check out if that 240 gives us what we need. So right now it is 6.35. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 40. 2, 45. I miscalculated. So 15, 30, 2 more. Aha! Gears rise out of the murky water. And now we have access to the switch on the island. This is the final switch that we can throw. They should now all be on. And it has also given us our notepad 221. Okay, so that turns the bottom two. This turns the top two. So what we shall do... Uh, oh, it's only the first one. I just made a revelation after playing with this thing for like an hour. So you pull it down once and it rotates all of them. 
keeps rotating the middle one. So that means I can get it to 2 and 1. I need 2 to be here so it rotates over. I need 1 to be here. If 2 or 1 is here, then I can get the middle one to where I need it. So 2, 1 there, 2 there, okay. 1 there, there. Now when I pull this, it'll rotate both of these and then 1 and then it'll give me one more on the 1 when I hold it. Do that one more time. So I need hold this once and then let the middle one cycle twice. Yep, and now I need the upper two. Chinka! So it took me way too long to figure out the mechanic, the difficult part of which is once you hold it, it does those two first and then we'll only spin the middle one for as long as you hold the lever. It took me an inordinate amount of time to figure that out. So, it makes it way easier once you realize that. Let's go see what our linking book looks like. And I'm playing with these switches because why not? Yep, linking book. This is the mechanical age. We have that map with the central mountain surrounded by the ring, uh, which he built to defend the area from unknown hostiles. Okay, so. Where do we want to go first? That's the question. Oh, we still have to solve one more. Let's go to the cabin in the woods. Cabin in the woods. Let's access the safe here, which the combination for the safe we determined is 724. Aha, looks like matches. Um, what do I do with the match? Let's turn the gas on. Oh, I didn't strike my match. Boom! Okay. Bam, we got a boiler going. Let's crank up the gas here. I'm just going to give it all the gas that we can put in there. Nothing. How much gas does this thing need? I'm going to blow up the cabin and everybody in the forest with it. That is all the gas I can give it. Okay. Something is exploding and I think that's probably bad. So there is an opening in the tree, which is continuing to ratchet upwards with time. Okay, so it's ratchet down. Let's give it three more ratchets down. That 
looks like it. Uh, it's still way up there. Okay, that's not right. case, I think that the boiler room is probably a good place to stop. Okay, so the tree is falling down now. What happens if we hop in on the way down? In we go! So now we're just sitting here in the tree, descending into... the linking book area. So we have gas control here as well, so we can <laughs> get out of this place. And this is obviously Channelwood. So I think this is a fantastic place to stop. We have discovered all of the linking books on the island. We found the Stone Ship Age, we found Channelwood Age, and we found the Everdunes Age, and we found the Mechanical Age. So there's four total ages that we have linking books available for. Next time, we will jump in and start exploring the Channelwood Age. So, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please uh, click the like button. If you disliked it, click the dislike button. But we really hope you like this content. I hope to see you in the next video. And please hit subscribe if you want to see more of this content. We really appreciate you, every one of you, taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. Uh, we hope that you've, we've given you a little bit of entertainment. So. Have a good rest of your day, and cheers.